we look at the past, I would hope we can get inspired by looking at the craftsmanship and looking at the details and long to build better because we see beautiful things like this. So I had this as our, as our advertisement thing. This is Thomas Cole. He was the Hudson Valley School of, Art, of, of Artists. Um, but this is kind of the ideal, okay? And we're gonna see a change here from this, this strict um, uh, and civic Greek revival to this romantic view of, of America, right? And this is of America and how people thought about America. You think about some of the other things that were happening this, this time. James Fenimore Cooper's The Last of the Mohicans, 1820, which is all about man in nature and, you know, out on the edge. Uh, Thoreau's Walden was 1854. It was all about getting out of the city, going to this, you know, this cabin in the woods and basically living, you know, very naturally. Ralph Waldo Emerson was a very uh, influential uh, philosopher, wrote about nature in 1836. And then our two guys, Andrew Jackson, da Alexander Jackson Davis was um, uh, a return to nature guy. And you'll see in his books and things like that how he, just remember this picture because A.J. Davis's book is very similar to that. And then Alexander Jackson, Andrew Jackson Downing was a horticulturist. He was a writer for a landscape magazine and he had the most popular books on horticulture and landscaping, if you can believe that. Uh, but I, he reminded me of Martha Stewart because he was just, he was speaking about uh, interiors, he was speaking about um, uh, furniture, and he was talking about fruit trees, and he was talking about how you made a home. And so it's, it's, it's very interesting what he was doing. So these are all Thomas Cole. Look at the romance and the uh, you know, idealism of, of nature and of outside and, and what's going on. And, and certainly this, this one with this, uh, you know, ancient Greek temple, um, you know, in an idealized landscape and Thomas Cole painting there, um, you know, it speaks for this, this romantic era. So we'll be talking about these three styles. Um, any questions about America at that time or comments? So, it's evident that there was a rejection of this, okay? That there was a rejection of this Greek revival. Um, there was a rejection of, of how uh, um, stern it was and how uh, um, mathematical it was. And so, you have this change, and a number of things are happening here. This is, this is Lyndhurst. This is a famous uh, Greek revival building done by Davis. Um, but you have these contrasts between this, you know, romantic versus the practical, artistic versus the engineered. And so there is a interest, great interest in this more romantic style of, you know, uh, of architecture this, um, uh, that's... It's a romantic ideal, just like those paintings, right? It's the romantic ideal of the Gothic, of the Italian, and of the French uh, all flowing into the house. So the Gothic revival will be this first style we talk about. Um, remember that the, uh, this palace burnt down in 1840, okay? Um, they rebuild it in the Gothic style, okay? This speaks to the power of the Gothic, and there was a lot of... Uh, debate in England about whether this was going to be a, you know, uh, a Greek temple or whether it was going to be something more English and more Gothic, the Gothic size one. Now it was it was designed by another guy, but Pugin was the uh, was was responsible for the interiors. Now Pugin, and, and you'll you'll begin to see this. And look, realize that the, some of the things I'm talking about, we're going to be talking about all the way into the arts and crafts period with William Morris and Gustav Stickley and uh, certainly um, Ruskin, I think I'll bring Ruskin in here, who speak about the morals of architecture and who speak about what architecture should be and, and what it should represent. So Pugin was a moralist, right? And his, his whole thing was that um, this was a this was closer to God, okay, than 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 another style, a pagan style like a Greek temple, right? And so there is beginning to see this influence, and certainly the arts and crafts guys are rejecting all of this ornamentation, are going to reject all of this stuff, but they're going to use some of the guys like Ruskin, like William Morris, 
uh, to speak more about the arts than the crafts, okay? Because you'll see, especially next time, it's over-industrialized. They, they feel like they've lost their soul to the machine. And so realize that this is going to be a conversation we're going to be having for 60 years, 70 years. Um, so Westminster House is rebuilt. It's led by a Pugin. Uh, Ruskin is also a strong promoter of the Gothic style. He wrote a book called The Seven Lamps of Architecture, which are really uh, seven moral ideas that architecture should be, strength and morality and you know, different ideals of what, what architecture should be. These are kind of the details. This is Virginia McAllister's book. Um, I've got a number of, of, of architectural styles books. There's a um, Marymount. Uh, there's a professor who emails me after that. I don't know if you're watching, Bob. I appreciate it. He gave me some recommendations of some other books. So I'm using Virginia McAllister's books and these other books to, to highlight some of these details. This steep pitch, certainly this detail right here, this is the barge board or verge board. Uh, these were sawn out. The, 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 this, these pieces couldn't happen without industrialization, okay? Realize that a lot of these styles, you know, they don't have the ornamentation and detail without it. The peak top windows with the hooded ornamentation, sometimes this cresting and this turret details the battlements. Uh, you'll see clustered columns. You'll see uh, all these different uh, Victorian elements showing up in the Gothic Revival. Now, this is a one at, um, uh, where is this? Historic Richmond Town in New York. Um, and I went there when I was at North Bennett Street. Hood moldings over the windows, this Gothic peak, certainly your verge board or barge board with that kind of ornamentation. This kind of, this all, and that would have been made on a bandsaw, right? That would have made, been made in a shop. Uh, definitely would have been made that way. Um, Gothic Revival. Now, of course, they're, they're going back and they're looking at historical buildings. This is uh, uh, Notre Dame before the fire. Um, the details that you're going to see here, uh, this rib ceiling, right? Uh, these clustered columns, see how these columns are grouped together. Um, tracery, which is what's in, the, in, the, in these windows here, where you have the, uh, that sculpted detail where the windows are broken out. So this, all of these details are things that you'll see in this style, right? So you see the verge boards, you, there's, some, uh, there's a, um, a trifoil uh, hooded window, uh, clustered columns, right? You got the turret molding here. Right, all of these details show up uh, in this Gothic style. More fun stuff here, an oriel window. That's kind of a the important detail. You see the hood moldings over this top. This kind of tracery in, the, uh, in between the columns. You got a spandrel with the trifoil in there. Uh, all of these details. Now, I picked out Gothic Revival houses that are pretty easy to pick out. You're gonna see some that aren't quite as easy. Now this one, <laughs> um, does anybody know about this house? It's the Wedding Cake House in Kennebunkport. Um, it's, a, it's a famous house. Now, it's, it's most famous because it's federal house underneath. Okay, you see that fan line? I mean, that's such a strong federal detail. And this played in window above. Uh, so apparently it's a, it's a uh, federal house, 18, uh, 1790, 1800s. And by 1850, he had been inspired by the, the Greek revival, obviously. Uh, sometimes called the wedding cake house, but he overlaid on top of this all this Greek revival, you know, stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's all kinds of things you can go on in here. Um, but this kind of speaks to uh, this kind of speaks to this generation, right? Because it is look what I can do, right? Um, you could never do this 30 years beforehand. Yet, because of the machinery and industrialization and stuff like that, it's actually accomplishable, right? And it, it, there's a pride and there's a, uh, there's pride there, right? And so as, as much as it look, may look garish to us today, um, that was pretty hot stuff back then. Um, another Greek revival, right? This kind of vertical board is very popular in that time period you see the oriel window with the tracery see these windows that have that kind of leaded glass design detail certainly these kind of uh, um, finials and things that would go up from the top are very important to that time period um, but but this on the vertical siding that's a very popular detail 
Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, Victorian colors are um, bad. <laughs> um, they, they, um, yeah, I mean, there's a whole nother talk. And uh, they, a lot of uh, very um, earth colors and, and bold colors, colors on colors. I mean, one of the reasons in the arts and crafts period they stain grade stuff is because this is just too much, right? It's just like, it's a rejection of all of that. And they want to get back to that stain grade, that natural, let the beauty of the woods set come through. But yeah, you'll see some other pictures that's kind of over the top. Um, this is Lynnhurst. This is one of uh, A.J. Davis's uh, thing. Uh, clustered columns here, right? Battle tournament uh, here, tracery in the windows. I mean, you've got hood, hood moldings here, very, uh, very uh, Gothic revival. And here's the inside, you know, speaking of, speaking of colors again, right? Um, it was a, uh, I, I want to give them, a, cut them some slack, right? <laughs> because there, there was a lot of excitement about what they could do and what they could make. I mean, realize you could never do this 20 years before. And so they're kind of going, Oh my gosh, yeah, I mean, the world's my oyster. I, I can do whatever I want.